Okay, freaks. I'm in the work truck with the trailer, and we're heading to the roundabout. I got the short turn here, so I don't have to be in it very long. Oh, I locked out. Hey, they're fixing the center. They're gardening. I'm out of there. Every time you see the roundabout, you know what comes up, don't you? That's right. The mower dealer. Pretty cool, huh? That's already paid for. Let's go inside. Get the keys. Wait, they're already in there. Someone could have taken my mower. Okay, time to take this baby home. It takes up an awful lot of the trailer. An awful lot. My trailer looks tiny now. Tiny, I tell ya. Little bitty trailer. Pretty big mower. Yeah, pretty big mower. Back is this one. It's a 48, it's a Snapper Pro. Bull Rider. Bright and shiny. Okay, here we come to the roundabout, and it looks kind of crowded this time. All I can say is, I got a baby on board, a bright, shiny, bouncing baby 48. Okay, everybody out of the way. Be cool, be cool. Don't be jumping out in front of me. Go ahead, dude. There you go. You can go ahead. You got a trailer. I'll hook you up. Go make some money. Woo. All right. I'm looking in the rear view mirror. Mower still back there. Okay, let's pull up the hill here.
Well, it's been raining all morning. Stopped, it's midday, and I'm not going out in this. It is very cold. Very cold. I'm still plugged up from last week. God, what a big baby I am, right? Allergies. I'm going to talk to you guys about allergies because some of you brought that up, and I know it's a big deal for a lot of you. Uh, here they are put away. They fit right in here next to all my miscellaneous stuff. I'll give you a proper tour of this again here in a little bit. Let's go in here. I want to um, talk to you about how to deal with allergies. Okay, if you go back through my videos 2013 and 14, it's always about the same time frame, right about March. You know, I get this bad head cold stuff again. And it really is, I believe, from going out into the cold, because it's cold, these cleanups have been pretty darn cold on me, you know, stocking cap stuff again. And, um, and working out in the weather, as the buds are just coming off these trees, there's a little bit of allergy involved in this whole mess. And the dust from the mulching of the leaves, and the mold that's on all that stuff, it's all funky, You've been sitting around outside getting some mold underneath of it all, and you chop it all up and might not have breathed it in, breathe in some of it whether you got a mask on or not but it can settle down even with your goggles on or whatever settle in your eyes and stuff and it just it affects you it's on your clothing so you take your mask off and all that but the little pieces are floating up you get kind of funky well i do get another wave of allergies later on when the oak trees have those like long stringy things that fall off everywhere and i'm blowing them around and that 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 is the week that i will like start swelling up with my eyes and feeling like I got like strep throat but it's just like I'm super sore and all jacked up up in here from the allergies. I know some people have it a lot worse than I do and I've known a few guys that didn't have it but in their lifetime they started developing it and they were like oh man they had they couldn't like even think about cutting grass so if they would have been grass cutters they might have developed it later on and had to have quit or something I don't know. You, if you got really bad allergies it's something to really think about. You're, it's going to hit you, and I don't know if you're going to be able to trudge through it like most of us do. We're like, oh, this is going to be a bad week and a half or two until the mold levels go down or something. But some things you're going to want to keep around with you that might help you out in other ways that I haven't mentioned before. Oh, the pooper's going berserk. Pooper, hey. Threw a t-shirt at his head. He's now trying to get it off. I keep him from licking his butt crack while I'm making a video, okay? <laughs> Don't go kissing pooper right now. <laughs> um, a um, fire extinguisher, man. Keep one of these. Um, I didn't mention that before, but you need to have one of these in your truck. 15, 20 bucks. Keep it there. You might catch something on fire somewhere. And when you go to get your insurance, like I get that artisan and contractor's insurance, make sure that there is a um, little bit of the policy covers if they have to call the fire department because it can be like $2,500 to have a fire truck show up out here and put something out because your mower caught on fire and is burning down someone's garage or whatever. <laughs> um, let's keep that in mind. Okay, a couple other little wacky things. Well, we'll start with the allergy stuff first. Allegra. Allegra works wonders for me. I actually um, been taking some right now <laughs> and it stopped the nose running and now it's just I'm just plugged up. So, But it, it stopped the nose from running. That's a big deal because who wants to be dripping and blowing and snooping and going through 50 rolls of um, tissue and then your nose is all raw and look like Bozo the Clown. So Allegra works for me. I always keep headache pills around, okay? And um, my migraines, when they hit, they hit and I'm doomed. Um, one of the other things though that, that I run into out there is, is um, I'm allergic to certain poison ivies and things, but also, like the Rosa Sharon bushes, can certain times of year they can get me. And some of those little milk pods that people have grown on fences, and all that. Anything that has like that little white milky stuff when you break it apart. If that stuff gets on me, I get like little itchy, scratchy bumps. And you go, oh man, I got the funk, I got the bumps. All right. <laughs> and you go, oh, well, they'll go away. Well, in the middle of the night, you're going to scratch them maybe and you don't know it. Then you got it and they go all around. Or you're laying here, you know, on your side. And you had them on your arms from carrying a bunch of brush and throwing it on the trailer, and then that arm touches your hip. Now you got them on your hip, from there they just start crawling. Creep across the land, killing firstborn man. That's for you, Metallica freaks. 
Um, what do I find for that? Uh, straight up, I've tried everything. Ivy Rest, and there's also Ivy Dry, Walgreens brands, whatever, Walmart and Walgreens. Um, just cream, put that stuff on. It, it can help you out. I don't think it really clears it up as fast as um, Calamine lotion. Straight up old school pink stuff. All right, you take it, you, you kind of pour it on with some, dot it on with some tissues and stuff, and you look like a weirdo. You've seen me have that on before, but the best one to keep with you is the Calamine spray. Okay, you can keep this with you in the truck, and you spray it on in between yards because you're gonna be getting hot and sweaty, and it's gonna be running down your arms to sweat, and it's gonna bring the funk all. It's gonna, if you get some up here, it's gonna just let it all go down and through you. So you need to keep it sprayed. But I do have some of this. Okay, these are the pads. All right, keep some of this stuff on hand. You need to have like a little bitty little first aid kit too. Okay, it doesn't have to be something crazy. It just has. To, you need to have like neosporin. You need to have some maybe some little alcohol wipe pads, and then you um you know band aids, some nice ones. These are the um, antibacterial ones and flexible ones, and maybe a few of the bigger. The bigger kind, so you, in case you get something jacked up, you don't want to have to stop and leave, and you don't want to get dirt in it. You want to, be able to keep going, so you want to be able to like clean it a little bit, put something on. I'll be good for a few more hours, you know. Um, you're gonna get splinters and thorns in you. Uh, you're gonna somewhere along the line, you're gonna go, oh wow, what was that? And I've had thousands of like thorn tips broke off in me, and they're always in a bad spot. They're never on the back of the hand where you're like, eh, whatever, I'll take that out later tonight. No, it's somewhere where your pistol grip is just pushing it farther in. All right, so you got to have tweezers around. Okay, keep some tweezers, and um, maybe like a little pack of like sewing needles or something, because if you got pushed all the way back down in there, because you had to keep going right and doing stuff, and you got to dig it a little bit and get that sucker out of there. It's a little irritation, goes a long way. Uh, <laughs> little um, eye wash. It doesn't have to be like the special kind. You can just get some little two dollar bottle of um, eye wash because even with your glasses on, like I said, stuff settles down in here. And you'd be like, oh man, there's something in my eye, you know. You Last thing you want to do is first put your dirty finger in there. Second is put your dirty finger in there and try and drag it out, you know. <laughs> Scratch yourself. So you just want to wash it out. <laughs> just deal with it, do it. And um, that's that. There's more stuff, but yeah, I have allergies. They hit me. They will hit me again when the squiggly things come off the uh, oak trees, and I'll be plugged up for a couple weeks cutting. I'm positive I showed you that last year. And um, I used to always wear boots. This is a side note. I'll, I'll show you some footwear stuff. But I've always wore steel toe boots. And mainly when I was cutting in St. Louis on the hill, and they look it up, there's a reason why they call it the hill, but all them terraces, all them yards, I never wanted my foot to slide underneath the back of a mower or something. I always had steel toe boots. But they um they give me blisters and stuff sometimes. So for this I was getting a blister on the big toe on the inside here. Only thing I ever found it to get rid of a blister would be um, these little lambskin pieces, okay? You get these at Walgreens or Walmart. They're kind of expensive. But you cut them off your own self, that's why it's all funky shaped, okay? You um you can cut it out however you want. And then you peel the back off and you stick it over the spot and it's like your skin all right this is your skin and it's it's tough stuff i mean it, it doesn't let the it lets the blister heal let's put it that way so yeah you guys have to be kind of prepared all the way around if you're really going to live this lawn care lifestyle because you know it's coming it's it's part of your life like everything like your your health and these little the little um, nicks and bruises and all that, they won't really go away. They'll get worse if you don't take care of them. You know, you're going to step and twist your ankle, right? You're going to step in a hole and twist your ankle. You're going to want to go wrap it with an ace bandage and keep it wrapped for the next few days while you're out there because you're going back to work. You don't have time to lay around and wait for your cold to go away or your sprained ankle or your sore back or something. You're gonna have to go do it. I got the back stuff. I bought something at the expo this year that I put on my back. Some of you freaks seen that. And um, I'm gonna have to make a video on that too. Anyway, hopefully tomorrow I can go out and cut some grass, but, or do some leaves, but it shows clouds and cold all week. And I know some of the people just north of me got snowed on yesterday, so I don't know.
that's how the season starts. Kind of, kind of freaky. Okay. I had parent-teacher conference this morning. My backpack blower. All I brought with me because I was in the school was just some small stuff. Blowers, hedge trimmer, all that. So that I could um, leave there and come straight to the yard. Plus it was raining this morning when I took the girls to school, which is when I had to get Victoria out of school and then to daycare so I could do the parent teachers conference, half day stuff. Then um, I knew I was coming straight here. I wanted to just do little things. I thought it'd be raining more, but the sun's out. And dude, it's nice now. But it's still too soggy to cut. I'm trying to be quiet now too. But even though this is my home away from home, the yard I've been doing since I was a kid. I'm gonna trim these. Now I didn't bring it, I brought, I have one rope, but this is pretty low as it is. I'm just gonna go ahead and make a big mess, clean it up. And this one I did tie a rope around. We're gonna see what happens. Maybe I'll chop it up too. <sighs> All right, let's have a little bit of fun. But if this weather holds out like this a little bit longer, I might be getting a mower out. This thing's seen better days. It's definitely been there for at least 20 years. Figure that out. So now, you just um, kind of blow it all out. Get it all out here in the yard, but I'm not gonna cut the yard today. I'm gonna rake up some more of it, and then um, move over to that one, do the same thing. I should have brought my mower, but I'll be starting this yard April 1st and going all the way through.
So there you go. I'll get all this up when I come back and cut the grass, which looks like it'll be in about a week. And right now, oh, I'm gonna go put my equipment away and get out of this yard and move on to another one. I'm just kind of prepping these yards right now. Like in front here, all I do is pick up the trash that blew up in the landscape. Freaky stuff going on. And that's it. I thought that ambulance was gonna make more noise. All right. Let's see what else I can fit in with just blowers and a hedge trimmer, a rake, trash cans, and some rope. Okay, let's see what we got going on here. Dingle balls. Lots of wet dingle balls. Bummer. <laughs> Too bad for me, huh? Yep, sucks to be me. Ah, I ain't got that. That ain't that good. Look at all this crap. It's wet, too. This stuff, I forget the name of it, turns purple. And these little bees love to hang out in it. I might just go ahead and just chop it all back. Because actually, um... They never wanted it to go over to their side. I don't know, it's just goofy, but speaking of them, does it look like anybody lives there anymore? You remember last year when they didn't pay me and I didn't come back and service their yard? Then they had me do it when it was like, you know, taller than my Snapper Pro. Got me all current, caught up, ahead of the game. And then that was the end of that. Looks like they busted out, they're gone that one coming a mile away like I said once they go bad they usually never make a comeback so I got it's super saturated back here I would totally run it up but I, I should have a mower for this one so what I'm just gonna do is kind of prep it maybe tomorrow I'll buzz over it and look at this yard over here Swamp. Yeah, they got stuff hanging out their mailbox, on their door, stickers all over their windows and stuff. The camper thing's gone. Um, this is a trailer lock. So, I probably got their, little, their RV thing repoed, because look, that's one of these, dude. So they busted it off to get it. Somebody took it. Somebody said, you know pay, you know play. Don't want to hit that. Don't want to hit this either. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna go ahead and just blow it all out here and kind of scoop up some stuff and um, make it presentable. I need a mower, I might be going home. I got out my handy dandy backpack blower. In this case, I might as well have just used my handheld because I took it off my back and used it as a handheld so that it wouldn't bump the window when I was walking past. You know, the last thing I want to do is bust out their window. It's bad enough if they looked out right now, they're going to see my butt cheeks. <laughs> but, um, you know, that's just kind of how you do this here. You just blow out from underneath the bushes and um, kind of wrangle it all out into the yard. Of course, I'm blowing them out of one bush and into the other one. But what can you do, you know? Then you just have to go along there and blow all those out too. It's um, it's, There's really no trick to any of this stuff. It's the same thing over and over. Although if this was lava rock, you know, then you got to worry about the rocks, the light lava rocks blowing out into the yard. Or if it's mulch, you can't, you know, turn it up full steam. But the, these are them heavy rocks. So I could, um, you know, I could put some um, power behind it and kind of make some headway real fast. But that's just kind of what you do. 
if there's a lot of gumballs and sticks and stuff, then you might want to rake up a little bit before you um, go hitting it with a mower and um, just go from there. Okay, I am going to scoop up into cans with my rake all the stuff I blew out of there, all this stick area right here. And then maybe a little bit over there where there's a million gumballs. And then I'm going to go get my mower, my old mower, because I'm not putting my new one on here. And I'm going to ping, pang, boom, shoot these gumballs all over the place. Got the shoot block around, I'll be okay. No, I'm going to go ahead and just go over it because there are a lot of leaves mixed in with it and I'm not going to you know, bother raking it all up because um, this is one of my good yards and I'm going to be right back here. It's going to be starting. Oh, it's going to be starting. I like how it's kind of being easy right now. Easy, Greg. Work yourself into it here. No need to go do 10 of them in one day just yet. You wait till it's hot and humid, then you have to do 10 of them. Time to get the Snapper Pro out. Good thing I do have that shoot blocker. I can prevent these gumballs from flying out and hitting that vehicle parked out in front. I'm not going to let it discharge towards the house at all, even though I do have the blocker um, down a lot. But right now I'm just going to go forward and backwards like always, just trying to direct it more out away from the house. And I will actually scoop up one more pile when it gets kind of thick towards the middle. Now I close the shoot blocker as I'm going around out here because I could hit that car and then you know open it back up as I'm backing up and doing things here. It doesn't really matter if I get it into the landscape around the tree because I'm going to blow all that out again too. Right now I'm just trying to get these leaves kind of chopped down so where I can see that um, the gumballs that are left you know there was just too much stuff in there uh, it's hard to rake up gumballs when they're covered up with leaves is what I'm trying to say. So you go over and you um, you chop up as many leaves as you can because those will fill up your cans fast. You know, there's no no need to take them all away. And then, um, then what you have left is a bunch of gumballs and you just kind of use your blower and blow all those into a pile and scoop up a can of them and you're set. After that, the, the yard will, um, each time you go, even if there's a few little gumballs left, uh, they'll just kind of disappear and get chopped up and things. So the pattern right now is just back and forth um, in the same direction for me. It's kind of what I like to do. And um, there, I had a little pretty good little start. So I got it away from the house, and now I'm going to go ahead and do some out here into the front part. But what I did first was I blew all of this area out into the front. And then now I hit it one more good one. And then we're all set, you know. Yeah, here we go backwards again. That's my technique. You know, I love how the Velkies automatically turn around when you start to back them up because um, they get out of your way. It allows you to actually walk backwards. You know, let's see if I do it again right here. Yep, here we go. See how it turns around? Tucks back up underneath there. That's a good thing. But it's also bad if you're trying to back up and you're not used to it, it uh, it'll twist around and snap your ankles up. But after a while, you get to where you can back up with them, um, and you know, in a straight line. Like, look at that. You know, oh, I started to twist myself. But I was going around that little hole. There's a hole there, and I think I'm going to fill it in this year. I'm going to find some dirt someplace and bring it around because um, something must have rotted, like a tree stump or whatever, and it's got a pretty bad dip there, and I could. Um, mess myself up if I let that front caster wheel go in at first sometime at full speed when I'm not paying attention. Yeah, mess myself all up. You ever been speared by the handlebars of a, uh, a walk behind? It's not fun. There you go. All done. I even went around the backyard just mulching it. I didn't lay down an edge because I didn't bring a trimmer. I don't have to deal with the swamp or this yard anymore, but that stuff, I may end up mulching it up a little bit because it's going to end up blown over here if this place is abandoned. Who knows what's going on there. Got a lot of stuff. I'm gonna go to the dump. And you just kinda do what you gotta do. They came out. They came out while I was there. And they were happy. And um, I am lucky. I got some cool people. And it's everything's go. They paid me. 
for this time and the first real cut because this one just kind of clean up got money there's a check in here yeah I like that that's why I do it and um, I call this the stupid stuff I'm doing all the stupid stuff right now and what it means is these are yards that well, I'll be having fun everybody's like oh let's get our striping kits all installed over the winter and all that I'm thinking no man let's just be ready for trash cans and debris it's just all debris right now the fun time it's still a little ways off like this next place that I'm gonna go look at right now it's just there's <laughs> I'll show you alright when I say stupid stuff this is what I mean I seem to have an abundance of these yards but just remember I'm only at the yards that are jacked up the yards without the gumball trees or the oak trees the yards that don't have any trees the nice ones I'm not there yet I'm at these jacked up yards Yeah. All right, let's just climb the fence, shall we? Whoa. Look, they did that for me. They saved me. I think they saved me. Oh, this is cool. They actually did save me some time. Thank goodness for grandkids coming by and playing with the rake, huh? Hmm. I wonder if I could fit my 48 in here. Stripe it. Ah, oh, we're gonna try, huh? <laughs> yep. Nothing but fun. But I'll tell you right now, I'm not gonna start on this today. We'll save this for tomorrow. I'm not in the mood. All right, freaks, the weather took a turn for the worst. Oh my gosh, it rained again all night long, but it is so cold. Oh man, hey, look at Pooper. Look at my grass. Look at that freaky stuff, huh? Gotta do something about that. Yeah, why don't you do something? The ground is saturated, no mowing. I'm gonna go ahead and just put the gate up and we're gonna go out covertly. Just a handheld blower, shovel, definitely need a shovel for this one. Rake, some cans, and I'm gonna go make a dent in that yard, that stupid yard <laughs> that I didn't do yesterday. And I'm gonna take a few loads of that stuff out of there because that's what you can do on a sloppy cold day like this. Somehow I actually make a living being like um, some sort of scrub guy, right? <laughs> you guys are like, man, this is, look how long care is this? Hey, it's not all peaches and cream, man. You gotta get down and dirty sometimes. All right, here we go. Okay, I'm here. You ready for this? You might be ready, but I'm not ready. So, I gotta scoop up all this stuff and get it out of this yard. What's the best way to do that here? I'm just gonna go old school. I brought my snow shovel and rake. But look, they have one for me already out. Oh, how nice. Look, they got a yard cart full of stuff for me to get rid of. Oh my goodness. Well, here's where it's gonna go. Right through here and into my truck. And then you're gonna say, oh, I'd just be throwing it in the trailer and stuff. I do not want that slop down in my trailer. I do not want it in my truck bed. I just wanna get it in those cans, sit it in here, and then I'll show you at the dump why I don't wanna put pile crap in here because I'd have to unhook my trailer to back it in and get it into the pile because you can't just go dumping it in between. I'm gonna do rake it out, you know, from here to here. You guys asked me that a lot, like about 400 times last year. How come I don't just throw stuff in the truck? It's because I would have to unhook the trailer every time I went to the dump then. And that's just stupid because you can't pull up and just shovel it off here 
it's supposed to go back in its spot. Or, you're not allowed back at the dump. See how I'm wearing this mask, even though it's all wet, it's not real dusty, but still, you don't know what's in there. This is some nasty stuff. Steak nasty. But, what you're doing is you're shoveling money into the can. There goes some money. There goes uh, 15 cents. <laughs> We're gonna go for a whole quarter. 25 cents? Okay. Holy moly, we better stop there on that can. I'll be dragging it. Oh, I love yard work. That's how you do it. That's the hard way. You guys can let me know the easy way. All right, I'm at the dump. Before I show you this stuff, um, I stopped and I bid on a yard because someone called me. They got my number from another person. People are backing in next to me. Um, and so I stopped by there and it's right around the corner from like four yards that I already do and it but it's a corner house so it's bigger and it's jacked up you guys would be like oh man you know it's another one of those jacked up yards okay um, but I'm staying close to home and I think I could hit with a front with the 48 but the um, the backyard is like a chain link fence inside of a chain link fence see you guys don't know nothing about that I see the yards you're doing striping them big pretty things all nice three hundred thousand dollar houses white vinyl fences maybe no fence at all you know half an acre backyards no man this is the city here the old city <laughs> the fallen down city and um hey let's watch these guys rake this stuff out here forget about my story you'll see that yard in the future it's around the corner white house blue garage doors oh it's freaky so i got all my cans right here they guys are raking their stuff out and I had a couple um, little hay bales there. I got this thing out of here. And see, by just stacking it all nice and neat in here and like that, I could pull in forward. Look at a swamp. I'm going around it. I'm going to drag these cans around over there and pour them. And then I'm going to back right up into there and leave. That's why I do it. You got to obey the rules. You got your limbs over here. You got your grass and leaves over here. You have to have your sticker. You got to pay for it from the city. You have to have a business license. And then you get a, a sticker that lets you come in the dump. And um, yeah, I picked up a yard. All right. I'm, I'm not excited though. <laughs> but it's weekly. It's weekly. Okay, second load. Not as full. All this stuff right here, I just blew off the sidewalk. I didn't get up in here. This is the front yard deal. That's a whole separate day when um, it's gonna be dry, probably in a week or two. I'm gonna be back here and I'm gonna be cutting the whole front yard. I'll blow all this out and just mulch it up. Now this yard, I only cut the front yard. I just cut it regular. And once or twice a year, they have me come in the backyard. Other than that, other than something like this, um, I'm never go back here. What do they do back here? I don't know. Apparently not too much, but. It looks better. Let's go take a look. Let me close this gate up. You can see right here, I got rid of a, a lot of stuff. Still got my shovel right here, scooping it up. Look at all that stuff. Man, it's not 100% perfect, but I mean, really? Is there such a thing? I don't think there is. I clean that up. Funky yard. Do you even call it a yard? I don't know.
Now you're gonna say, what would you charge for something like this? Well, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna step over this. Before I tell you, all of this stuff is gonna be blown out. All of this is gonna be out. And it's mulch, so you gotta be kind of careful. Get it all out, scoop it up, mulch it up. And then that's my regular weekly job right here. Well, since they are a regular customer, and it didn't take me but an hour and a half, 80 bucks, but you guys should pay, charge at least $100. And the way I, the reason I say that is because this. I'm doing it because they're cool to me and I got the yard and it's, um, they let me do whatever I want, okay? <laughs> it goes a little bit, I give you a bonus if you let me do whatever I want, whatever I want. But when someone calls you out to a mess like that where you have to just go in and scoop it all on the tarps or cans and shovel it and rake it, man, you're not gonna find many people willing to do that. Um, so you have to charge them something decent. That was a hundred dollar job, dude. Cause who's really gonna go back there and rake and scoop up eight cans, take them to a dump, come back and do eight more? I mean me, cause I just did my spare time. I ran around, did other things. But <laughs> you're not gonna you're not gonna call up the guys down the street with the lawn services and just have that happen. They they don't even have a snow shovel and a rake with them and trash cans and they're not equipped for something funky like that. They got a, a Dixie chopper, right? And they got a couple other little things, and they're not they're not even this is out of their element. Just like when someone says, "Hey man, will you trim my hedges and stuff?" You should charge more for that too because not that many people can do it. The kid down the street's not going to do it and you're not going to get some of these big people to come out and just do only your couple shrubs or hedges. You know, it's, it's um, something that a lot of people aren't willing to do. So they're going to have to pay because that would have taken them, you know, a month of Sundays, which means like 30 days trying to clean that up to yourself. You have to find some lawn freak like me and pay them a pretty decent amount so they will do it because it's just not going to happen. And you can make a living doing that. You can find a lot of these gigs. I can find these all over. I go up down the streets and I see gumballs and piles of leaves everywhere. I don't want to do it because I got all these cool yards I want to do. But if I didn't have anything, that these cleanups are endless. They're everywhere. People will pay for that. They'll pay. I'll pay. I would have paid somebody to do this. Mm, 40 bucks I'd have paid them because I want to make my money. But <laughs> but I'll just say I don't even want to do them. Oh, I see somebody walking around. I'm out of here. I thought I'd show you that yard I just picked up. I'm right around the corner from it. So it's the blue one, or the white house with the blue right here. Look at that, I can use a 48 all around the front. Down the side there. But wait till you see that backyard. Whoa, I can't turn in because somebody will be coming. There, the backyard makes it not so fun. Yep. So these are the kind of yards that I have around my town. You know, they got these funky gates and stuff. Look at that. You know, how are you going to get in there? All right. This is what I deal with. But. The bonus is I'm right here, you know, right around town, right around my girls' school and daycare all day. And um, there is enough work to survive. And it's better than, I make better pay than I would working at some freaking place up here in the shopping center because that's, that's all that's going on or the warehouse out here, you know, driving a forklift or something. There's not much else happening around here. I mean, the steel mill is still going, but Look that up right now, U.S. Steel in Granite City, and um, see the massive layoff that just happened this week it was announced. All those guys are freaking out in my town. Dude, and that's the, that was the last place in my city that paid decent, and now they are letting thousands of people go. So, you kind of have to make it on your own in this world. You can't rely on too many other people family and friends you know have your back but 
you can't rely on big business or the economy to just throw you job offers. You gotta go out there and shovel up gumballs and stuff to make some money. You know, that's what you gotta do, you gotta do it. And I'm cool with it, I'm cool with it. I'm gonna have to go door hang a few of these people here soon. Uh, we'll go for a little trip around the neighborhood hanging some flyers. Pick up a couple. I'm gonna be picky though. No fences. Too many fences. No gumballs. Another cold, windy one. Clean up. More water and slop. Oh, let's see what we got here. I didn't even bring a trimmer. <laughs> didn't even bring a trimmer. Got a small mower. Gonna get rid of all these leaves right there. Blow all this stuff out of there. Chop it up. All this junk. So that's what I got going on. All that down in there. It's just to clean up. Problem is, they want all this stuff out of here. All that. Now how do you get all that out of there? You, know, you use your blowers and you get as much as you can but you might reach down and scoop some out with your hands. Don't be scared. It's just called hard work. Don't want to go back there. But as you can see, the options for um, lawnmowers. One option. 21 inch mower. <laughs> I'm not going to quit them. I've been doing them for a long time. They're cool people. But I don't pick up yards like these. Well, what am I saying? I just picked up one yesterday. I try not to pick up yards like this anymore. I need some more than bigger ones, but I refuse to go too far out. All right, I'm not gonna film. Sorry. I lied. Here's what I've done so far. Hold on, let me get the little funky things. All I did was blow it all out away from everything. I went over it with just the regular lawnmower. I made a couple passes here so far. I'm gonna go around, mulch it up. This and this. You could have used the handheld, but I had that. And then I'm gonna come over here and it's just gonna be mulch, mulch, mulch. And um, I'm probably gonna scoop up a can of that though, because it's kind of thick. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go dig that stuff out from the patio. I want the money. It's the same as cleaning like gutters and stuff. Sometimes the little weird places have to be hand cleaned out, you know. Well, the back's all done. I couldn't get every little piece out of there, but it looks a lot better than it did. The front yard is, look at all that, look how much, you know, it messed it up. Oh, my nose is running real good. Mission accomplished. Dogs are barking at me. It's a wrap. Got my money too. See my truck back there? I'm switching to my phone. We're gonna go freak vlog for a moment. I'm going to uh, actually go in here. Post office. Check this out. I gotta pay my truck payment. Yeah, I still mail them in. And um, Illinois Department of Revenue. Pay your taxes, people. I owed Illinois. You know, when I used to work in Missouri and live in Illinois, it was always stupid. You'd pay one and get back from the other. Now I just pay. Let's go in here. I'm gonna show you something freaky. Oh, look at my stamps. I got some cool stamps.
Hey, what's going on? Not much, how are you? Doing all right. Got a letter. There was somebody else in there I would have talked. P.O. Box 1091, Granite City, Illinois, 62040. That's where I accept mail. <laughs> See, I'm trying new things. I'm trying to be more outgoing here. Walk in the post office, talking on my phone. No, walk in the post office, vlogging on my phone. See, I'm different than the rest. They're just gonna stand in line, their headset sung, yipping and yapping. I'm actually gonna show you something. I'm gonna show you, I pay my bills. 